Hey Art Tribe, thanks for tuning in to another episode here on my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is MJ and today I'm going to be trying my best to explain to you guys a very long awaited video, how to paint skin. So this has been a long, long time coming. I am working on a series, so you're going to be getting how to paint tan skin, how to paint uh, fair skin, how to paint dark skin, how to paint like more yellow toned skin. So I'm going to be working on a series that focuses in as much as possible onto every skin tone. Because to be honest, it's so complicated and really hard for me to sit down even for 20 minutes and try to explain to you how to paint skin. The first thing that I'm going to say is that you're going to have to spend hours practicing. Nothing that I can tell you is going to, I, I can't give you like a magic formula and then boom, you can paint skin. I can give you what stands out to me as far as what I can visually see that I'm doing or seeing others doing when they're painting and give you those tips. But the truth is that when you're painting skin, you are, there are so many different colors that go into a skin tone besides just skin. So um, don't worry if you are watching this video and you're missing all the names of these paints. I'm going to have it all listed down below in the video notes. So don't, don't freak out. I'm going to have all that listed down below for your reference. If you guys have any questions after this video or if something was confusing, please let me know down below and I will address it in an upcoming video. Again, I'm working on a full series to try and dive deep into every uh, every skin tone that I can think of. Um, so right now what I've started off with are my basic colors. So I use Gamblin paint because it's my favorite. They did not sponsor this video. Full disclosure, they send me some paints uh, every once in a while. They are amazing people and I've been using them long before they ever would send me paints. So I definitely recommend Gamblin as a paint company. They are amazing. I still have Another thing is that a little goes a long way because I still have the paint that they that I first bought when I first started oil painting, which was probably like five years ago. I paint in layers, so I just use a little bit at a time, as you can see on the screen. But a little goes a long way. The ones that I keep on rebuying are the ones that I use a lot of. Um, my favorite being the Indian Yellow. That is a staple of mine. It's my favorite paint just period my favorite color gamblin's indian yellow which is what i always start off with that off the bat will give you a beautiful skin like tone so i start off with titanium zinc white cadmium yellow medium indian yellow hansa yellow medium cadmium red medium naphthol red i think i also use like a perlin i think it's called perlin red Alizarian Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Cobalt Blue. So these are my staples for creating skin tones. It looks crazy, I know, but just as you can see, it's kind of like cooking. So you're just gonna grab a little bit of every spice, throw in a little cinnamon, throw in a little turmeric, add a lot of flavor. <laughs> I know, that's, I'm lame. Uh, so, uh, what I do is just you take a little bit of every color you're trying to make. If you're going for a tan skin like this, you're going to want a golden undertone. That is the most important thing. So when I say golden undertone, uh, think of makeup. So uh, us girls, we have a slight advantage when it comes to painting skin tones because we know our skin. We know kind of other people's skin for the most part. We know what colors don't go with us. So me, I am a Latin American woman. So I know that my skin tone is going to have golden tan undertones, like a red undertone. Somebody more fair might have more of like blue undertones, like pink undertones as opposed to golden. So those are things to keep in mind. You're going to want to stay towards the yellow, red, and then add a slight bit of blue because the blue is going to 
add that brown element to your skin tone color so very be very careful you one thing when you're mixing skin is that you don't want to overdo it and then start back up so say that you're painting a skin and you're like oh mj told me to use a little bit of blue and you grab like a huge glob of blue it's going to be nearly impossible to come back from that mistake you might want to do that because you always learn from your mistakes but that's a mistake that I've made. If you take too much of one color and throw it into the mix, it's nearly impossible to come back from that. You're gonna to wanna to start over because you're just gonna waste your time. So to be safe when mixing colors and you're not sure, always go little by little, adding every other color in there little by little. So uh, like, like I stated, you're gonna start off, the way I always start off is with a glob of white, I grab a good chunk of the Indian yellow and then after that you're just adding little bits of all the other color. The blue is going to be the least amount you add and again very very little. You can if it's not quite making a difference add a little more. And think of blue as your salt so you don't want to go in if you over salt something it's not edible anymore. I know my cooking analogy, I'm not even a good cook, guys. So <laughs> my cooking analogies suck. I just know that when I over salt something, it's not edible. That's all I know. <laughs> so this is similar. But um, yeah, so another thing to keep in mind, um, one thing that I like to do is print out my reference, have it right next to my the stuff that I'm painting. I don't always do that because I have my computer screen that I'm going off of. But if you don't have a screen that you're going off of, I suggest printing out your reference picture and setting it next to your paint your paint setup so that you can uh start going towards stop looking at the skin as skin just look at it as a color so what you can go even one step further is take your main color of the reference that you're going off of cut out a little square paste it right on your palette and then try and come up with a mixture to match that color Another thing, so now going into kind of after you've, say we've, you know, we did a great job, guys. We came up with our skin tone that we love. Now what? That's not where it ends. I know it sucks, but that's not where, that's not where we end this story of skin. <laughs> um, so the next step is to create dimension and depth to your skin tones. So great news, you can use your base color that you just came up with that you worked so hard for. You can use this skin tone as your base, but you're gonna want to make your browns, make your reds come up. Remember guys, go outside on a sunny day and just kind of take a look at your skin. There is green in your skin, there's purple, there's blue. These are the colors that are going to bring your, your skin tones to life. So when you are painting skin, really look at the colors that are coming through. You can even manipulate these. So you can bring forward these blues and it'll create a beautiful, more interesting image to look at. But when you're making your browns, add blue. One thing that I, that I always say to people who are kind of learning, uh, if you can not put black on your palette to begin with, that is gonna be your saving grace. I, I don't know if you can tell here, but I have not, I'm in this picture, in the painting so far, I have probably used black on her eyelid where her, um, her eyeliner is for her cat eye. But if you uh, start using black to mix your skin tones, it's gonna gray them and muddle it up. I do not suggest using black until the very last minute for the stuff that you really need to be black black if you can completely stay away from black you're probably at an advantage i i'm i'm almost positive that you'll you'll love how your image comes out without black say as do as i say not as i do because i do love using black uh as hair and stuff like that but i try my best not to use a lot of black because it ends up messing up your other colors for whatever reason i think what ends up happening is that it soaks up those colors you just when in general like when you're in the sun i don't know 
maybe I'm making that up, but I just know that black will muddle your color sometimes. Do not use black as a color trying to make your browns. Use your ultramarine blue, you can use a phthalo blue. Those are the two that I use to make browns and darken my skin tones, but do not use black just because it's gonna make it muddled. It's gonna look less lifelike and less like skin. At least, again, in my opinion. Um, another thing, another big, big thing uh, to remember is when you are painting skin, at least the way that I am painting, I know that there's people that paint very layer or very kind of globby and thick and they're, they paint really quickly and they don't, that, that does not apply to what I am doing here. But one thing to keep in mind is to work in layers and let your layers dry. Let your layers dry. I can't say it enough. So if you are trying to create depth, keep in mind this painting that I'm working on, I can spend 40 to 50 hours working on a painting and you know, I'll sit every day, maybe four or five hours and paint and then set it out to dry. And I'm doing that for like two, three weeks till I'm finished with the painting. If you try and create these layers and this depth, like these white highlights, if I were to try to create this white highlights on the same time I sit down to do my base layers, it's gonna be a muddy mess. It's just gonna be this glob of paint and I'm just gonna get frustrated. So always let your paint, let your layers dry in between or you're just going to be mixing the what you're putting on top of that layer back down with what you had below so this is applying to oil paint there's other mediums which is kind of inevitable for example gouache this is something i'm still learning where everything's kind of getting muddled so i haven't quite figured it out yet but uh, the beautiful thing about oil paints you let it dry and you just paint right over it and you can create that layering effect with um, like when I'm adding these white highlights, I'm just taking a little bit of that paint and kind of spreading it until it's blended. Let the layers dry in between in order to create the depth. Uh, another thing that I can kind of uh, reiterate is the redness of the skin. Like you want to think of the three dimen three dimension of the skin so everywhere that is closer to the sun is going to be brighter everything that's further away is going to be uh you know more shadowed that just is kind of common sense it goes without saying but it's sometimes important to remember or have have it said again um just because I, it's, I just always try and figure out the best way to explain how to paint skin because it comes so, like I said, it comes so naturally, I think because I'm female and because I've been painting, I know kind of how to contour my own, contour my own face. And so I always, I think just naturally, I'm able to do that with my paintings. Where it comes in difficult for me is when I'm painting a male which I'm working on a painting right now. I can't help but contour and give him that Kim Kardashian look, which isn't bad, but it may not be what the person who commissioned me to paint this gentleman wanted. So we'll see how they like this is, I've gone on a, on a tangent guys, sorry about that. But basically what I'm saying is that just keep in mind kind of how, what is going away from you and what's getting coming towards you. So again, cheekbones, uh, just everywhere where the light hits, that's where you're gonna add your highlights. And that's gonna, th this is gonna take time for you guys to learn if you're beginners, but you're just going to want to start noticing in people, in yourself, before you sit down and paint, maybe sit down and look at yourself in the mirror, try and see where that light hits you. Because what happens, and I am guilty of this sometimes as well, is when you're looking at a picture reference, I work off of reference, you're going to just see the two, dimension, two dimensions of the image. So this is something that my husband's always telling me to think three-dimensionally so you know when you are painting try and envision how this would look in real life so when you're looking at your reference try and keep in the back of your mind that this try and pretend that this person is right in front of you and then you can start to create that that kind of 
uh, three-dimensional aspect of your piece, which is tough. It's hard for me to do it. Again, I'm, I'm learning myself. And I, like I said, these this is something I'm teaching you or I'm trying to teach you guys the little that I've learned in the last, well, 15 years of painting, five years of oil painting. I am self-taught, so I'm just teaching you what I've kind of taught myself to do. If you guys have any questions, let me know because, again, I'm working on a series. I want to be able to answer your questions as best as possible. A lot of the time, I don't know what you guys are struggling with. So I'll get the... Sorry, my dog is snoring in the background. <laughs> He's so loud, guys. He's a Neapolitan Mastiff, 150 or 160 pounds. Don't know. I don't, he snores so loud. It keeps me up at night and I don't know what to do about it, but he's adorable and I love him so much. Uh, moving on, I keep on going on rants. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I forget where I was. Oh, so if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below and be specific because a lot of the time people ask me, how do you paint skin? How do you get that skin tone? How do you do that? I need more specifics like whatever you guys are struggling with let me know so I can address it in the next video because otherwise I'm just kind of shooting in the dark it's I, I don't know where to even start because I don't know what you guys are struggling with so what I again I'm working on a series of videos and I want to be very specific so just let me know what your questions are exactly so I can go down a list and answer these questions in the next few videos if you guys want more don't forget to check out my patreon page I have real-time 40-minute videos there is a monthly sketchbook date where you guys get to hang out with me as I draw and there is a weekly vlog which is just kind of like an update for everybody as to what i'm doing or not weekly it's every month but um that is just another thing to throw out there if you guys are interested in that in that type of thing and uh there are monthly kind of i think they uh, are like wallpapers um there's just like high res images that i put out there monthly but that you know no stress if you guys don't want to do that it's just something i'm throwing out there and I'll be working on uh, opening a store very soon. I do have one. I'll link it down below called Store Envy if you guys are interested in prints, which I get a lot of questions for. But I'm working on a full-on like website that's just taking me. I'm just so slow with that type of stuff, you guys. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. At least if it just helped one person, I would be happy because this I'm so slow at editing these videos and that's why they take me so long. But I'm proud of myself because I feel like I'm getting a little bit better. If I go back in my videos, I feel like I'm getting better. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just patting myself in the back. But um, I'm hoping that I'm getting better because I just they take me so long. But I really need to discipline myself so I can put them out at a more consistent schedule. But I hope this was helpful. Again, let me know below what you guys think if you have questions. And thank you, my lovely, lovely patrons. You guys mean the world to me. I really appreciate you guys for real. I don't know how to, I never know. I don't want to come off as ingenuous, but I really, truly appreciate you guys. Thank you and stay tuned for the next video of the series. Bye, guys. Bye. Showing off, don't wanna have to wait tonight, wait tonight.
Faster. 